Hi, so this is intended as a quick run through, a demonstration of just how easy it is to create an MVC3 web application from the starting point of an existing database. So what's happened so far is that I've used the excellent SQL database diagramming tool to create my database and, um, and I've populated and I've been populating data into that quite happily. But what I'd like to do now is create a simple front end for that. Um, just also to note that because I'm using the VMware movie capture functionality, uh, the downside of that is that you don't see the mouse pointer. So apologies if that causes um, any confusion, but you should still be able to follow what's happening. So just to begin with, have a quick look at the, the uh, some of the tables and entities here, the timesheet table and the invoice table are the two entities we're going to be using in our example here. And also just note these company and client lookup tables um, which provide values for these IDs contained in the, in the, in the tables. So we're over in Visual, Visual Studio, create a new project In the Visual C Sharp section, we find ASP.NET MVC3 web application there. I just want to give that a name and click OK. I'm just going to take the default template, the internet application, just click OK on there. And uh, Visual Studio goes away and generates my MVC model for me. And you can see that straight away, straight out of the box, I do actually have a working application. Only has a home page, which is what we're seeing now, and an about page. And you can see that there's plenty of relabeling that would need to be done. So the next thing I'm going to do is create a folder here at the project level. I'm going to call that DAL for data access layer. You could put this anywhere, but um, just a little bit of a convention to keep things neat and tidy. So now inside that, I'm going to create my ADO.NET entity data model. So I'm just going to give that a meaningful name. Click add and I'm going to generate from database, as I've already uh, made clear. And uh, you can see that I've already got the connection to that database on my server. Um, otherwise it would just be a simple matter of using the standard Microsoft database connection dialog. Make a note of this name here or at least just realize that that's, what, that's, that's the actual object that you're making. And then in this step, we're basically just going to just select the tables that we want. So it's all the tables, except I'm going to leave out this day table because there's no actual data in there. And also, I don't want sys diagrams in there. So when I click finish, you'll see that Visual Studio goes off and creates my entity model. And you can see here the two tables that we're talking about. And they look fairly similar to the database diagram, except now you see they've got these navigation properties at the bottom and most interestingly of all you can see that the invoice has a timesheets collection that the, um, the Visual Studio Studio has worked out for me so you can see that in the database diagram the timesheet table has an invoice ID and so therefore one invoice will have many timesheets or could have many timesheets associated with it and so those will actually be available to me as a collection. So I'm just going to build this solution so that all of those objects are available to me. And then I can go straight into my MVC model, into the controllers and create the controllers for those new entities. So here's the timesheet. And you can see that this by default is already selected, controller with read, write, actions and views using entity framework. So here I can just choose 
the timesheet model class and the data context class is that object that we that I mentioned the naming of when we were generating the model and just click add and what that's going to do is create a, a controller, a timesheet controller here which is what's opened on the screen in front of me here and also under the views, under views and under timesheet folder you've got the various pages that have automatically been generated so a create, delete, details, edit and an index page and within the controller code you can see that there a bunch of action result methods have been created to load the, the relevant pages so I'll add another controller for the invoice simple as doing that and all that remains I mean at this point I've actually got a working application they all look the same as it did before there are no new links up here but if I type timesheet here you'll see that I can actually pull up a list of the timesheets and I can click details on any one of them and the details are indeed listed but also even more excitingly you'll see that this company for the where the company ID is controlled has actually been correctly configured as a drop down list for me and the same with the client here and all that remains is to go into back into the shared into the views shared folder here so views shared and this file here underscore layout dot cs html is what configures those um, those menu items so that I can actually get to the uh, get to those new items so all I need to do here a timesheets link for the, and that's going to point at the index page in the timesheet controller so the timesheet controller put that there for the timesheet controller and I want to use the invoice controller as well the label is going to be invoices and again it's going to be loading the index page And so now you can see, I can click on my timesheet link there, and I can create a new timesheet by simply going there and filling out the timesheets, including the drop downs. Thanks for watching.